What we're going to be doing in this section is discussing ICOs. Now, this isn't directly relevant to trading, but if you get in on an ICO, there is a good potential for you to profit by then trading that coin upon it being listed on an exchange. Now, ICOs, if you weren't aware, stand for Initial Coin Offerings. So, at their core, ICOs offer potential investors such as us pieces of their new cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency token in exchange for the likes of Bitcoin. These ICOs are often put together to help fund these new cryptocurrencies based projects whilst they're in the development stage, which is generally time and resource intensive. But what you can then do with these pre-created tokens is trade them on cryptocurrency exchanges such as Poloniex, providing that they're listed on there of course. So this provides you the chance to profit from these ICOs while supporting projects that you believe in. Now these ICOs can be deployed in different ways, or similar in their approach, but their funding can be static or dynamic, depending on how the project creators decide to deploy their ICO. Let me explain. So an ICO can be set to achieve a specific funding goal, and every token they sell will have a predetermined value that will not change during the period of the ICO. This also means that the token supply will be static. But there are also ICOs which are much more dynamic in their approach, where the more funds the project receives, the higher the token price will be. On top of that, it's also possible to create a new token upon the purchase of a token, with a limit being set of how many times this can actually be done. So, as you can tell, the deployment of ICOs are pretty flexible. Now, in terms of profitability, many investors have experienced great returns on their ICO investments, but it's also true that many investors have been left shortchanged by shady ICOs. For example, if you got in with the Ethereum ICO, which was sold at 0 0.0005 Bitcoin for Ether, you'd be experiencing one amazing return on investment. But like I also touched on, there are many ICOs which don't end in such profitable circumstances. So you need to be careful about what ICOs you get involved in. Don't be fooled by fancy websites and the promise of the next big blockchain based project. Do your homework. You'll want to know key things such as the history of the team, what the project aims on doing, what are others saying about this project online, have they had any past successes and so on. Homework is key with getting involved in initial coin offerings. Just to touch on the most notable initial coin offering, I'd say by far it's the Ethereum ICO, which raised approximately $18.4 million in Bitcoins, and it ran from the 20th of July 2014 to the 2nd of September 2014. The funds raised during the ICO then helped fuel the development of Ethereum, and it really did shine a spotlight on just how powerful ICOs were. Now, I did just mention that Ethereum ICO was the most notable. I stand by that. But that doesn't mean it raised the most during its ICO period. That crown goes to the Dow. But let's now move on to discussing the legality of initial coin offerings, because it's a real grey area, it's not clearly defined. So, over being sold as a financial asset, which will be tightly regulated, ICOs are sold as digital goods, essentially as discounts to the cryptocurrency. And that's the reason you see ICOs referred to as crowd sales, is to get around that legal regulation. Although, don't be fooled into thinking that regulators are ignoring the current explosion of ICOs. Some courts of law do regulate them in the same way they would do with the sale of shares and securities. So whilst it is a grey area in most parts of the world, 
do expect that to change in due course when regulators impose some sort of regulation upon them. But as mentioned, it's a grey area at the moment as there isn't a current regulation that ICOs can clearly fall into. One thing that's very intriguing at the moment is the amount of interest that ICOs are getting from venture capitalists. One of the key reasons for that is because of the liquidity cryptocurrencies provide. These VCs could see substantial returns far quicker than they would do with building a company up to get acquired or go for an IPO. One VC firm to keep an eye on in this space is Blockchain Capital. They raised $10 million in just six hours with their ICO, making it the world's first digital liquid venture fund. Their cryptocurrency token is known as BCAP. As mentioned, there is a lot of interest from VCs, but for more, let's say, traditional investors, they're shying away from ICOs at the moment, simply due to the regulatory uncertainty, high valuations, and lack of control. Some cited as ICOs currently being in a bubble. Hence, that links back to my point earlier. Do your homework before investing so you don't get caught in a Ponzi scheme because they do exist in the ICO world. Now, before I wrap up on this lecture, be sure to check out these sites which will provide you more information on the up and coming ICOs. They're super helpful. So we have ico-list.com, tokenmarket.net, cyber.fund, and smithandcrown.com. See you in the next lecture.